This problem is found to be one of the most difficult, but it's really not that bad. What you have up top is a bivariate display. We see a scatter plot showing us the batch number and the number of broken pieces. We can see there is a negative correlation, as in as batch number increases, the number of broken pieces goes down. Now, this is the hard part, translating it to a histogram. To turn it into a histogram, a histogram is univariate. So looking at the univariate data, we only want to look at one variable. We want to look at number of broken pieces, which is on the x-axis over here, but on the y-axis over here. So what do we have to do? We have to look across. Look across at zero. Right here, we would count one, two, three, four points. And it might be hard to see. Let's open this up. You can see there are one, two, three, four. I'm only counting this way across this y-axis. There were four batches with zero broken pieces. There are three batches with one broken pieces. Three batches with two broken pieces. I'm just counting across. Four, three, three, four. You see, I'm just looking across this variable right here. This is the y variable right here, which when we go down here on the other plot, it's the x variable. And the pattern was four, three, three, four, three, three, four. So you're just going across the y variable. You're not even looking at this. Don't even look at the bottom one because there's nothing here about batch number. This where it says number of batches is not batch number. It's actually the count or frequency. So this is a count or frequency bar. So ignore what this says. This should say right over here, frequency or count. So it's the count of the batches with this many broken pieces. And this blue dot right here is one batch that had zero broken pieces. This blue dot next to it is one batch that had zero broken pieces. And there are four batches that had zero broken pieces. So remember, this is a univariate display where the scatter plot is a bivariate display. Describe the distribution as shown in the histogram. Well, the histogram is very uniform. Shape, center, spread. That is how we describe a histogram. Shape, center, spread. What features of the problem is more apparent in the histogram than the scatter plot? The histogram is going to show us the number of broken pieces, but it doesn't really show us what happens per batch. So we can see the uniformity of the distribution. That's what it, the histogram is going to show us. It's going to show us the shape where we were not able to see that up here in the scatter plot. What aspect of the company's problem is more apparent in the scatter plot? Well, the scatter plot is going to give the bivariate relationship, and that is definitely the negative correlation. Negative, and it's more than somewhat linear, that is very linear. This is a negative correlation, definitely between broken pieces and batch number. As we said, as batch number increases, broken pieces decreases. So in the later batches, we're doing a lot better. Now this question is great. We've done things like this on the test. It's not too bad. It's, it's kind of a fun one. Because you should look at it and say like, well, which of these is linear, which of these is not? And the first one I see that is really not linear is this one right here. That is that is not linear. So with this in mind, this is gonna have correlation close to zero. Remember, we can make an oval around it, which means correlation is close to zero. So B is gonna have a correlation of 0 0.006. That is our weakest correlation. Now I wanna point out, it does have a strong relationship. There's that strong relationship right there. It follows a pattern, but it is super weak when it comes to linear correlation, which is R. So it has a weak, non-existent linear correlation. Next, let's look at the strongest one, which is right here. Although this is negative, it is the strongest. We want to talk about strength, direction, form, unusual features, and statistical significance. Now, we don't have statistical significance on here, but we should remember that we can talk about that when talking about correlation. I would say that this is statistically significant, and it is definitely strong, it is linear, and it is negative. So let's go ahead and give it the strongest negative linear correlation that we got, because I don't see anything that beats it out. Next, let's do the other negative one. Well, this one A is negative, so it has to be the only other negative. It's a weaker negative, somewhat linear correlation. I mean, it's we can still give it that. It's, it's, it's scattered, but it's still got something going on. And the last one is the strong positive linear correlation and we can see it right there. 
Once again, the sign is whether it's positive or negative, and the stronger it is, is the closer it is to negative one or positive one. If it's close to zero, it is weak. And once again, close to zero does not mean there is no relationship. It just means there's no linear relationship. All we're doing with this is trying to detect a linear, and B has no linear relationship. If you were to draw your oval around it, it would look like this. And this one's closer to zero because it would be scattered out more. This one's more like a one, and this one's extremely like a one if you draw around it. That's, that's why it's close to negative one. It's very strong. Last but not least, we have the QQ straight enough, no outliers. My class knows what I'm talking about. So which of these conditions is violated here? It's definitely, definitely the straight enough. You're waiting for it. <laughs> so let's go here to the straight enough. Um, it is not linear. The scatter plot is not linear. So this is not what we want. We do not want to do QQ straight enough, no outliers right there. And that's got it. This is a nice and easy quiz. I would suggest going back and maybe one of the best ones for this is the second one. Good practice here to kind of do this again and see what you get. 